Jayam Vishnupad Paramahansa Pri Prajakacharya Stotras Tasri Srimad Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai. Yiskan Founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jayam Vishnupad Paramahansa Pri Prajakacharya Astotra Satasri Srimad Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Prabhupada Ki Jai. Ananta Koti Vaishnavrinda Ki Jai. Nama Acharya Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. Prem Sekaho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai. Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopinath. Shama Kund Radha Kund Giri Govardhan Ki Jai. Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai. Navadweep Dham Ki Jai. Jamuna Mai Ki Jai. Ganga Mai Ki Jai. Tulsi Devi Ki Jai. Bhakti Devi Ki Jai. Samveta Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai. Nitai Gaur Premanande. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories, all glories to Sri Guru and Sri Goranga. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. There's a god sister there. She's sitting down. The other lady was embracing her. They should go to her. Yeah. Black body. Hare Krishna. We welcome you to our Sunday festival and feast. I will read a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 1. The first step in God realization. Text 11. Please repeat after me. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 Please repeat. <coughs> Etat. Etat. Nirvidyamananam. Nirvidyamananam. Ichatam. Ichatam. Akutabhayam. Akutabhayam. Yoginam, Yoginam, Ripa, Ripa, Nirnitam, Nirnitam, Hare, Hare, Nama, Nama, Anu, Anu, Kirtanam, Kirtanam, Etan Nirvidyamana Nam, Etan Nirvidyamana Nam. Ichatam akuto bayam. Ichatam akuto bayam. Yoginam ripanir nitam. Yoginam ripanir nitam. 
Hare Nama Nukirtanam Hare Nama Nukirtanam Etan Nirvidyamananam Etan Nirvidyamananam Ichatam Akutobayam Ichatam Akutobayam Yoginam Nipanirnitam Yoginam Nipanirnitam Hare Nama Nukirtanam Hare Nama Nukirtanam Etan Nirvidyamananam Etan Nirvidyamananam Ichatam Akutobayam Ichatam Akutobayam Yoginam Nipanirnitam Yoginam Nipanirnitam Hare Nama Nukirtanam Hare Nama Nukirtanam Etan Nirvidyamananam Etan Nirvidyamananam Ichatam Makutobayam Ichatam Makutobayam Yoginam Nipanirnitam Yoginam Nipanirnitam Hare Nama Nukirtanam Hare Nama Nukirtanam Etan Nirvidyamananam Ichatam Akutobayam Yoginam Nirpanirnitam Arinam Anukirtanam Vaishnavis Etan Nirvidyamananam Ichatam Akutobayam Yoginam Nirpanirnitam Hare Nama Nukirtanam Etan Nirvidyamananam Ichatam Akutobayam Yoginam Nipanirnitam Hare Nama Nukirtanam Etan Nirvidyamananam Ichatam Akutobayam Yoginam Nipanirnitam Hare Nama Nukirtanam Etat It is Nirvidyamananam Of those who are completely free From all material desires Ichatam Of those who are desirous of those who are desirous of all sorts of material enjoyment. Of all sorts of material enjoyment. Akutabhayam. Akutabhayam. Free from all doubts and fear. Free from all doubts and fear. Yoginam. Yoginam. Of all who are self-satisfied. Of all who are self-satisfied. Nripa, Nripa. O King, o King. Nirnitam. Nirnitam, Decided Truth, Decided truth. Hare, Hare, of the Lord, of the Lord. Sri, Krishna. Sri Krishna, Nama, Nama. Holy, name. Holy Name, Anu, Anu. After someone. After someone. Always. Always. Kirtanam. Kirtanam. Chanting. Chanting. Translation. O King, constant chanting of the holy name of the Lord after the ways of the great authorities is the doubtless and fearless way of success for all. 
including those who are free from all material desires, those who are desirous of all material enjoyment, and also those who are self-satisfied by dint of transcendental knowledge. Please repeat. O King, o King constant chanting of the holy name, constant chanting of the holy name of the Lord. Of the Lord. After the ways of the great authorities, after the ways of the great authorities, is the doubtless and fearless way of success. Is the doubtless and fearless way of success for all. For all, including those who are free, including those who are free from all material desires. From all material desires. Those who are desirous. Those who are desirous of all material enjoyment, of all material enjoyment, and also those who are self-satisfied, and also those who are self-satisfied by dint of transcendental knowledge. By dint of transcendental knowledge. Report by Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada ki In the previous verse. The great necessity for attaining attachment to Makunda has been accredited. Who is Makunda? Krishna. In the previous verse, the great necessity for attaining attachment to Makunda has been accredited. There are different types of persons who desire to attain success in different varieties of pursuits. Generally, the persons are materialists who desire to enjoy the fullest extent of material gratification. Next to them are the transcendentalists who have attained perfect knowledge about the nature of material enjoyment and thus are aloof from such an illusory way of life. More or less, they are satisfied in themselves by self-realization. Above them, are the devotees of the Lord who neither aspire to enjoy the material world nor desire to get out of it. They are after the satisfaction of the Lord, Sri Krishna. In other words, the devotees of the Lord do not want anything on their personal account. If the Lord desires, the devotees can accept all sorts of material facilities. And if the Lord does not desire this, the devotees can leave aside all sorts of facilities even up to the limit of salvation. Nor are they self-satisfied because they want the satisfaction of the Lord only. So if we uh, examine the different categories, we will find that they cover all of us, mm. every single person in this room falls in one of those categories or more than one. We may be mixed. We may have some desire for material enjoyment. We may have some desire for liberation and we may have some desire to serve and please Krishna. But in any case, we are covered by this verse. In other words, this verse is addressing 
us, all of us, every single one of us. In this verse, Sri Shukadev Goswami recommends the transcendental chanting of the holy name of the Lord. By offenseless chanting and hearing of the holy name of the Lord, one becomes acquainted with the transcendental form of the Lord and then with the attributes of the Lord and then with the transcendental nature of his pastimes, etc. So the Lord is realized in different aspects uh, nama, uh, rupa, guna, and lila. That means uh, his his name, his forms, his qualities, and his pastimes. And by offenseless chanting of the holy name, the other aspects of the divine become revealed. Uh, his qualities, his, uh, his forms, his uh, pastimes, his associates, they all become revealed by offenseless chanting and hearing. Here it is mentioned that one should constantly chant the holy name of the Lord after hearing it from authorities. <coughs> so this word anu, anu kirtanam, anu means, it has two meanings. One meaning is to follow. For example, we are followers of Rupa Goswami, so we are called Rupanugas. We are, we, so our ch our chant, in our chanting we should follow the ways of the great Acharyas. And Anu also means continuous. So we should chant continuously. And Srila Prabhupada has uh, rendered this verse so beautifully in English. Uh, combining these different meanings very seamlessly. O King, constant chanting of the holy name of the Lord after the ways of the great authorities. It covers both meanings of Anu. Is the doubtless and fearless way of success for all. Here it is mentioned that one should constantly chant the holy name of the Lord after hearing it from authorities. This means that hearing from the authorities is the first essential. Hearing of the holy name gradually promotes one to the stage of hearing about his form about his attributes, about his pastimes, and so on. And thus the necessity of the chanting of his glories develops successively. Uh, yes, uh, it's the same idea. In the uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, the nectar of devotion, which is the uh, manual of Bhakti Yoga, uh, the law book, Srila Rupa Goswami uh, enumerates 64 items of devotional service. So there are nine. Uh, principal ones, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padusevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmanivedanam. But within those there are different 
uh, subdivisions. Shravanam, hearing. Kirtanam, repeating or chanting or glorifying. So there is uh, Nam Kirtan, uh, chanting uh, the holy name. And there's uh, Rupa Kirtan, glorifying the forms. Guna Kirtan, glorifying the qualities. And Lila Kirtan, glorifying the pastimes. So there's hearing in those categories and chanting in those categories. This process is recommended not only for the successful execution of devotional service, but even for those who are materially attached. So I won't ask who is who, but you're one of them, so it's recommended for you. According to Sri Shukadev Goswami, this way of attaining success is an established fact, Nirnitam, concluded not only by him, but also by all other previous acharyas. Therefore, there is no need of further evidence. The process is recommended not only for the progressive students in different departments of ideological success, but also for those who are already successful in their achievement as fruitive workers, as philosophers, or as devotees of the Lord. So this process is so perfect that it's beneficial, yes, for people who are trying to make progress in different pursuits, uh, you, you know, material enjoyment or liberation or devotional service, but it's beneficial for those who are already successful. So it's completely beneficial for everybody. <coughs> Srila Jiva Goswami instructs that chanting of the holy name of the Lord should be done loudly and it should be performed offenselessly as well as recommended in the Padma Purana. So now we come to the, uh, the method of chanting. This is Anukirtanam following the ways of the great authorities. This is how the great authorities have instructed us to chant offenselessly. One can deliver himself from the effects of all sins by surrendering himself unto the Lord. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Sarva Dharman Prityaja, Mam Ekam Sharanam Braja, Aham Tvam Sarva Pape Bhyo, Moksha Yisyami Matsujaha. One can deliver himself from the effects of all sins by surrendering himself unto the Lord. One can deliver himself from all offenses at the feet of the Lord by taking shelter of his holy names. Good news. <laughs> but one cannot protect himself if one commits an offense at the feet of the holy name. So we have to be very careful about offenses at the the feet of the holy name. Did you know that the holy name had feet? 
<laughs> it has, because it's a person, it's Krishna. Such offenses are mentioned in the Padma Purana as being ten in number. The first offense is to vilify the great devotees who have preached about the glories of the holy name. Yes, or as uh, stated in the Nectar of Devotion, to blaspheme the devotees who have dedicated their lives for preaching uh, the holy name of the Lord. So this is, uh, it's the first offense, and in some places, Srila Prabhupada has said it is the w worst offense, sadhu ninda, mm -hmm. to blaspheme or criticize devotees. So we should be very uh, careful of this. I mentioned this the other day, but uh, only a few of you were present when I did, so I will, uh, I will tell the story again. But our god-brother, Burijan Das, frequently con con conducts uh, japa retreats and seminars, and in one of them, he gave his students some homework. And the assignments were to uh, chant attentively, to, to monitor themselves how attentively they were chanting. And the other was uh, to avoid uh, criticizing devotees. The reason attentiveness is so important is, uh, uh, as one of our previous acharyas says, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, that if one chants with attention, all the other offenses will be eradicated. And if one chants without attention, inattentively or negligently, all the other offenses can flourish. So Burijan Prabhu gave these two assignments. And then the next morning he asked for reports. So one lady in the, in, in the class said that she had been determined uh, not to criticize devotees. But the company she was with uh, engaged in criticism. And so she couldn't help it. It was in the environment. So Burijan Prabhu said, you have two choices. One is you can change, you can ch ch try to change the environment. And if you want to change the environment, good luck. Because the environment doesn't want to change. The environment wants to criticize. So the other alternative is that you remove yourself from that environment and uh, you know, do what you need to do. And it's also, offense is very subtle because hearing uh, Blasphemy is also an offense. One should not speak it or hear it. Um, so we should avoid that and we should be careful about that. Sometimes devotees raise the question, well, someone, someone might be criticizing another devotee and if we tell the devotee who's doing the criticism that we don't want to hear this, he might take offense. <laughs> uh, but you could say that um, 
you know, you're, you're a very strong and devotional service, so you might be able to do this without being affected, but I'm, I'm, I'm weak and I will be affected, so it's better for me not to hear this. <coughs> the second offense is to see the holy names of the Lord in terms of worldly distinction. The Lord is the proprietor of all the universes, and therefore he may be known in different places by different names. But that does not in any way qualify the fullness of the Lord. Any nomenclature which is meant for the Supreme Lord is as holy as the others, because they are all meant for the Lord. Such holy names are as powerful as the Lord, and there is no bar for anyone in any part of the creation to chant and glorify the Lord by the particular name of the Lord that it is locally understood. In other words, we are not sectarian. Anyone who uh, chants the holy name of the Lord in whatever language or culture or tradition is appreciated. Uh, Srila Prabhupada had a disciple named Atreya Rishi Das. He was uh, from Iran, and uh, he's very brilliant, very highly educated. Uh, his surname was Attar previously, from Rose Attar. I probably gave, from that gave him the name Atreya Rishi. Mm -hmm. So Atreya Rishi joined in the United States, and and he. <coughs> served Srila Prabhupada there, but then later he went back to Iran uh, to, to spread the movement there. And Srila Prabhupada eventually visited. And while there, Atreya Rishi, you know, sort of waxed eloquent and said that he was waiting for the day when all the Muslims would chant Hare Krishna. And uh, Srila Prabhupada replied, why do you want them to chant only Hare Krishna? They can also chant Allah Allah. We are not sectarian. So that's the philosophy. And, um, and Srila Prabhupada was also very practical. He could have foreseen that if Atreya Rishi tried to get the Muslims to chant Hare Krishna, he could have gotten into difficulty. <laughs> so we're not sectarian and we're not that stupid, <laughs> we hope. <laughs> so, yes, such holy names are as powerful as the Lord and there is no bar for anyone in any part of the creation to chant and glorify the Lord by the particular name of the Lord as it is locally understood. They are all auspicious, and one should not distinguish such names of the Lord as material commodities. <clears throat> The third offense is to neglect the orders of the authorized acharyas or spiritual masters. So this, uh, uh, this offense is called gurur avagya, to, to disobey the orders of the spiritual master. And sometimes it is you know, translated or rendered, uh, you know, to, to consider the spiritual master as an ordinary human being. 
uh, or to envy his exalted position. Because what is the psychology of someone who disobeys the orders of the spiritual master? The psychology is he's just an ordinary human being like me. You know, why do I have to do what he says? In fact, I might be a little more intelligent. Uh, so that, uh, that is, is an offense. The fourth offense is to vilify scriptures or Vedic knowledge. Yeah, sometimes it's said to blaspheme the Vedic literatures or literatures in pursuance of the Vedic version. And here I sh should mention that there are different uh, types of offense, different degrees of offense, you could say. And these different degrees of offense were demonstrated in one incident related in Srimad Bhagavatam when Brigamuni went to test Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, and Lord Vishnu to who is supreme or who is most transcendentally situated. So first he went to Lord Brahma who is his father and he did not offer uh, respects, which was an offense, a, a more subtle offense. He didn't blaspheme him, he didn't uh, attack him physically, but he did not offer due respect. So that was considered an offense. It was an offense. And Lord Brahma became angry. But with his great intelligence, he controlled himself, but he became angry. Next, uh, Brigamuni went to Lord Shiva, who is his brother. They're both sons of Lord Brahma. And as a brother, he should have embraced, as we embraced as God brothers. And when Lord Shiva came forward to embrace him, Brigha Muni said, oh, get away from me. You're dirty, you're covered with ashes, and you, you hang out with very low-class people, um, you know, ghosts and hobgoblins. You know, don't, don't touch me. Get away from me. So that was a more serious offense. And if, uh, the, the first was like an offense by omission. But this, this second offense to Lord Shiva was more serious. It was a, a, a um, he, was, he was blaspheming Lord Shiva. And then third, he went to Lord Vishnu. And Lord Vishnu was reclining. His lotus feet were being massaged by Lakshmi Devi. And uh, Brigha Muni engaged in the most severe type of offense. He physically, um, in a way you could say, attacked Lord Vishnu. Not exactly attacked, but he kicked his chest. And Lord Vishnu was so sublime, he said, Brigha Muni, you are a Brahmin, please forgive me, I did not receive you properly. And I hope that my chest was not too hard. I hope that you didn't hurt your foot by kicking me. And so Lord Vishnu established, I mean, clearly that he was the supreme, completely fixed in the mode of goodness, beyond the mode of goodness, transcendental. But the general point here is that there's different degrees of offense. One is like, um, you don't do anything 
actively negative, but you don't do anything positive, just like mm -hmm. an error of omission. Mm -hmm. So I'm applying this to the fourth offense uh, to, to vilify scriptures or Vedic knowledge. So yes, that would be like the second degree to blaspheme the Vedic literatures. But it's also a subtle offense not to read them, not to, not to attend the discussions, uh, and not to read them. Uh, Srila Prabhupada translated these books. He would hardly sleep at night. He would retire around 10 o'clock and get up at midnight. And he would translate. While we were all sleeping, he would translate. And he said that his purports were his um, personal ecstasies. Mm -hmm. So we should, we should read them. And <coughs> can someone turn off this fan? And um, to not read them is a subtle offense. The fifth offense is to define the holy name of the Lord in terms of one's mundane <coughs> calculation. The holy name of the Lord is identical with the Lord <coughs> himself, and one should understand the holy name of the Lord to be non-different from him. The sixth offense is to interpret the holy name. The Lord is not imaginary, nor is his holy name. There are persons with a poor fund of knowledge who think the Lord to be an imagination of the worshiper and therefore think his holy name to be imaginary. Such a chanter of the name of the Lord cannot achieve desired success in the matter of chanting the holy name. So these offenses are sometimes, you know, it's the same idea. Consider the glories of chanting Hare Krishna to be imagination or exaggeration. And our God brother, His Holiness Sachinanda and Swami, has uh, taken this very seriously. He, a, a, as he described it with his um, beautiful German accent, that devotees, some devotees suffer something like schizophrenia. <laughs> it's like they have they have like a, a split personality. Our motto is chant and be happy. But sometimes devotees are not happy. The reason they're not happy is because they don't chant properly. And so he, you know, took up the, the, the cause and had, uh, of uh, Japa retreats. And in the Japa retreats, he helped devotees to chant properly, so they were happy. And one of the exercises uh, the devotees did is they, they wrote down, you know, all the bad ways of chanting and how they felt afterwards, after chanting like that, and they all felt miserable. <laughs> and then they wrote down all the good ways of chanting and how they felt after that and they felt happy. So chant and be happy is a, a, is a good motto. But to, to be happy, to get the result, we have to chant properly without offenses. <laughs> 
The seventh offense is to commit sins intentionally on the strength of the holy name. In the scriptures, it is said that one can be liberated from the effects of all sinful actions simply by chanting the holy name of the Lord. One who takes advantage of this transcendental method and continues to commit sins on the expectation of neutralizing the effects of sins by chanting the holy name of the Lord is the greatest offender at the feet of the holy name. Such an offender cannot purify himself by any recommended method of purification. In other words, one may be a sinful person before chanting the holy name of the Lord, but after taking shelter of the holy name of the Lord and becoming immune, one should strictly restrain oneself from committing sinful acts with the hope that his method of chanting the holy name will give him protection. So yeah, this is committing sin on the strength of chanting. It's, it's a fact that, uh, as stated in Shastra, that, that by chanting the holy name, one can destroy the effects of more sins than he's able to commit. That's a fact. But if one becomes, you know, cunning and calculating and thinks, oh, well, that's great. I'll just commit sins and then I'll chant and I'll get free from the reaction and then I, I can ch <coughs> commit some more sins and then I can chant and become free again. So not only is that an offense against the holy name, but it doesn't work. Srila uh, <clears throat> Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, one of our other great acharyas, says that even in, you could say, karma kanda, even in ritualistic processes of atonement. If you undergo the <coughs> ritual atonement to become free from the sinful reactions and then again engage in sinful activities in the expectation that you can perform this ritualistic atonement and become free, it doesn't work. It, it doesn't work like that. So it's bad, it's doubly bad. It's, it's bad because it doesn't work. In a way, that's good that it doesn't work. <laughs> and it's bad that it's an offense. On top, of, on top of it all, you're committing an offense against the holy name. <laughs> the eighth offense is to consider the holy name of the Lord and his chanting method to be equal to some material auspicious activity. There are various kinds of good works for material benefits, but the holy name and his chanting are not mere auspicious holy services. Undoubtedly, the holy name is holy service, but he should never be utilized for such purposes. Since the holy name of the Lord, excuse me, since the holy name and the Lord are of one and the same identity, one should not try to bring the holy name into the service of mankind. The idea is that the Supreme Lord is the supreme enjoyer. He is no one's servant or order supplier. Similarly, since the holy name of the Lord is identical with the Lord, one should not try to utilize the holy name for one's personal service. This is a very important principle that God is not our servant. He's not meant to serve our senses. 
But we're his servants and we're meant to serve his senses. In 1973, there was a meeting at the Bharati of Vidya Bhavan in Bombay under the leadership of uh, Mrs. Uh, Lilavati Munchi. And uh, the theme of the conference was how the Bhagavad Gita could s solve all the world's problems. And before the first session, she invited the different sadhus and political and social leaders to meet together with her in her library. And Srila Prabhupada went. Uh, I was there and Shamsundar Prabhu was there. A couple of us were there with him. And uh, there were many sadhus and leaders. So one of them, I don't, I don't remember his name. He had a long beard and he would have uh, big meetings, and gather people together and tell them to chant. And, and that by chanting, their material diseases could be cured. So he said to Srila Prabhupada, uh, you know, you are gathering people together and I'm gathering people together. You are getting them to chant the holy names and I'm getting them to chant the holy names. So we should cooperate. And Srila Prabhupada said, no, what you are doing is against our principles. Uh, and, and then he said the same thing, that the, that the holy name is the Lord himself and we're meant to serve him. We're, meant, we're not meant to try to bring him into our service you know, to cure us of our of physical diseases and so on. <laughs> the ninth offense is to instruct those who are not interested in chanting the holy name of the Lord about the transcendental nature of the holy name. If such instruction is imparted to an unwilling audience, the act is considered to be an offense at the feet of the holy name. So, you know, simply put, if someone doesn't, yeah, and sometimes it's uh, rendered, you know, to, to uh, preach the glories of the holy name to the faithless. So, if someone doesn't have faith in the Vedic scriptures, then we should not preach to them about the glories of the Holy Name because they won't believe it. And they may think that we are, we're deluded or we're imagining or we're exaggerating. And that is, that makes them like offensive. So. It's offensive for us to preach the glories of the holy name to the faithless because it makes them offensive. Mm. So we, we can always get them to chant or do service, take prasad, uh, but we shouldn't preach the, the, the glories of the holy name unless they have faith. And there, were, there was one incident I know very vivid when Srila Prabhupada was preaching to a professor in Sweden and one of the disciples started to, you know, s s preach about the glories of the holy name and Srila Prabhupada stopped him. He said, that's an offense. You know, he doesn't have faith yet in, in, in our authorities. So first we have to develop faith in him, you know, by reason and logic, then when we have we has, he has faith we can speak like this. Prabhupada actually stopped him. The tenth offense is to become interested, uninterested in the holy name of the Lord even after hearing of the transcendental nature of the holy name. 
the effect of chanting the holy name of the Lord is perceived by the chanter as liberation from the conception of false egoism. False egoism is exhibited by thinking oneself to be the enjoyer of the world and thinking everything in the world to be meant for the enjoyment of one's self only. The whole materialistic world is moving under such false egoism of I and mine. But the factual effect of chanting the holy name is to become free from such misconceptions. So when we chant and our mind wanders, if we if, um, consider the underlying psychology of the wanderings of the mind, we will find that it comes back to wanting to be the enjoyer, wanting to be the proprietor, wanting to be the controller. Or, in other words, wanting to be God. Again, uh, Burijan Prabhu uh, gave a very nice description. He said that that everyone is walking around with this, with the mentality, I mean, probably wouldn't say it, but w with the mentality, <clears throat> excuse me, please, I have an important announcement to make. I am the center of the universe. <laughs> And all of you should do exactly what I want, the way I want and when I want. And he, he said it's like everyone goes through life as if their life was a drama in which they are the hero or heroine. And they want everyone else to be the supporting cast. <laughs> to, to support them in their heroic uh, adventures here. So, um, yeah. So the real effect of chanting, offenseless chanting, is to become free from that <coughs> uh, false ego and, um, and be free from this I, me, and mine. And sometimes this 10th offense is rendered uh, to not have complete faith in the chanting of the Holy Name in spite of hearing so many instructions in the matter and to maintain material attachments, yeah, in spite of. And um, yeah, we should, we should have faith that all of our desires can be fulfilled can only be fulfilled really by Krishna and will be fulfilled mm -hmm. by Krishna. And so we should uh, give ourselves to Krishna, give ourselves to the chanting while we're in the process of chanting. And yeah, be liberated from this false egoism which uh, you know binds us into the material in the material world and and um, and prevents us from relishing the real sweet taste of chanting the holy name. So one last statement in the same vein. Srila Prabhupada gave a, uh, a talk in Detroit, in the Detroit temple, and he was saying that, uh, that the more you become the servant of the servant of the servant of the servant, uh, the sweeter and sweeter and sweeter and sweeter Krishna consciousness becomes. So material concept is I want to be the master of the master, I want to be the supreme master. Devotional would is let me be the servant of the servant of the servant. I'll be the last in the line. And I'll have the most masters. I'll be the richest person. So that should be our aspiration. And that can be achieved by the offenseless chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. So our
Are there any questions or comments? Yes. So in this formulation of the eighth offense, it says uh, one should not try to bring the holy name into the service of mankind. So uh, at the same time, it is said in the Nectar of Instruction that to over-endeavor destroys Pukti. So sometimes, at least I find that I want to do things in maybe an easy way because, and I, I, I'm hoping that Krishna will help this easy way to work, you know, that's easier than what everybody else does. Um, so it seems to me that that, that desire of mine is a kind of a desire for, you know, maybe a kind of a mystical perfection that, you know, things will work the way I want when I want them to. But at the same time, we're not supposed to over-endeavor and, you know, labor very hard. So how can we balance these two things? It is true. It's a, um, it, it's, it's an item that can destroy our bhakti, over-endeavoring for material achievements. That's, and um, so yeah, we, we, we can try, you know, whatever it is, try to <coughs> make money. Or, I mean, there's so many material things we can try for. But we should not uh, over-endeavor, because that will, it will take us away from Krishna, and it will, um, yeah, it will affect our practice of, of bhakti yoga. So, yeah, I wish you all the best. <laughs> we have a god brother named Vaisheshika Das, a wonderful devotee, fantastic devotee, and he, uh, he came up with a way of making a lot of money with very little endeavor. You know, it's this multi-level marketing, you know, about multi-level marketing of a, a water purifying device. And he was, uh, yeah, he was very successful in that. He got a, he got a good income from it and he was free to distribute books. Yeah, he, he bought a house near the San Francisco airport because that was the best place to distribute books in the area and he would just go to the airport and distribute books. So. Uh, I mean, seriously, if you can do it, you know, all power to you. <laughs> yes? So, sometimes we see that there is chanting for world peace. Some caption is like, we are chanting for achieving world peace and a better situation, and we should all join in this chanting. Is that, is, is that bringing Holy Name into the service of mankind? No, that's... Uh, I mean, we want peace, and the Bhagavad Gita gives the formula for peace. Bhokta Ram Yagya Tapasam Sarvaloka Maheshwaram Suridam Sarvabhutanam Gyatva Mam Shantim Richati. That's how you attain Shanti, peace. We want peace. So that's okay. This is referring to chanting, you know, so that, like Christians have meetings like that. Although I've heard that they're staged, some of them are staged, but they have meetings, you know, you just ac accept Jesus in your life and, you know, you can throw away your crutches and, you know, you, you'll be cured of your diseases. And so that's, but it's, it's, it's not particular to the Christian tradition, but it's, it's, a, it's a mentality of, you know, using the Lord uh, for our physical service. You know. So that's an offense. But to, to chant for peace, um, which can be achieved by removing our misconceptions and accepting Krishna as the Supreme, as mentioned in that verse, that's okay. I mean, you know, you, when people chant, you never know what mentality they have. Even here, you, you know, when people chant, we don't know what they're thinking when they're chanting, what their desires are. But from our side, we, you know, we chant purely, 
without any material motivation. And that will affect others, that will help them to also chant in that mood. I mean, there was one uh, incident in Hyderabad. There was a drought for a long time. And we had a Hare Krishna festival there with Srila Prabhupada. And, uh, you know, m maybe midway through the festival it started to rain. So as people were saying, it was in the newspapers, that because of our chanting, you know, it, it, they got rain. So we weren't chanting to get rain, but the rain did come, you know. And uh, it's in the Bhagavad Gita that all living entities subsist on food grains, and food grains depend on rain, and rain is produced by sacrifice, by yagya. So by Sankirtan yagya, we got rain. But that wasn't the purpose of the Hare Krishna festival. The purpose was to make people Krishna conscious. They were. Yeah. Yeah. We were, it, it, they got, they became Krishna conscious and it rained at the same time. Yes, sir. Maharaj, to mention that the inattentiveness is the, the breeding ground for offenses in the chanting, the holy name. Yes. Uh, can you give some hints of some of the causes of inattentiveness in the chanting? Uh, well, um, the cause is, you know, false ego. Um, I thought you were going to ask for some remedies. <laughs> so uh, I'll go for that. I'll go for that. Well, one thing, you know, as far as possible, is to get up early in the morning. Um, our God brother in Gainesville, uh, Kalakanta Prabhu, he says the best <coughs> advice he gives to any spiritual aspirant is to take rest early because then he can get up early and he can do his practices early in the morning. And so chanting early in the morning is, uh, is, is more, you know, all other factors, it's more effective. It's good to, ch the, the value of the chanting is multiplied when you chant in front of deities or in front of Tulsi Devi. And the chanting is also improved by chanting with other, with sincere chanters who have taste. And, uh, and Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, you know, if you can't avoid getting distracted, you should put a towel over your head so you can't see anything and get distracted. Yeah. And some great devotees in the, in the past, you know, some hundreds of years ago, they, they would have like um, caves or tunnels, like tunnels under the ground, and they would go, go into their tunnels and chant so there wouldn't be any distractions. And yeah, it's good, it's good to chant with others because if you're tempted to check your phone, your email, your messages, and if there are other people around, you might feel a little embarrassed. <laughs> but if you're all alone, because we don't really think that Krishna's there, that the Holy Man is there. So, oh, well, let me... And that's another thing Buri John Prabhu says, and it's true, that the mind will always tell us that there are more important things to do than chant Hare Krishna. So yeah, we can't give in to the mind like that. Yes? Uh, with respect to the fourth offense against Vedic literature, is the two texts, the Quran and the Bible, considered to be understandable of Vedic literature? 
as it is offending the two texts and their followers considered an offense to the holy name. For example, both the texts say thou shall not kill or do not harm anyone. But some of the followers do take me, uh, so offending or judging those followers for their impious acts against the Vedic literature considered an offense to the holy name. Um, no, I mean, we shouldn't, uh, you know, distinguish like material commodities between different holy names. But Srila Prabhupada would often comment, you know, that the Bible says thou shalt not kill, but, you know, the Christians are very expert at killing. So that's not everything that Srila Prabhupada said and did was meant to uplift people. It might seem like criticism, and in a way it was criticism, but it was meant to help them come to a higher standard and also help, meant to educate us in the difference between pure devotional service and other things. So you'd point those things out so that we could get a clear idea but, um, yeah, like Srila Prabhupada wrote, it's to call a thief a thief is not a, an offense. Mm. Yes? Uh, so the remedy you give for chanting, like put towel on your face or go to the tunnel, with me, I have two kids around me. Do you have any solutions for me, like in my... Yes, uh, wife, uh, two children. Is any remedy for me? One is wake up early, but I cannot finish all rounds. Some round left for days, and that is with my children. You know. So what I do so that I give out. Uh, because some round is attentive, some is not attentive. I'm chanting because I promise my preacher must assist in round. Yeah. Not have anything. Like half attentive. Some attentive, some mostly left not attentive. Some is attentive. So what I do is that. Um, can you make an arrangement by which your husband looks after the kids for some of the time? <laughs> no, I, seriously, I've heard of couples with this problem and th that's how they deal with it. Yeah, Maybe today will be the day. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good you do them anyway. I mean, it's better if you can do them attentively. But it's good if you're, you're keeping your vow. There is a value to it, even if the quality is not the best. But, of course, the better is to do with attention. Yes, Lalita Devi. Yes, a lot of times we are not aware of our own conditions and over and over maybe just part of who you are and then trying to balance it maybe such a foreign thing for the mind to even mm -hmm. capture and to bring it to the awareness and it may be retailed in Krishna's service, but still it is over-endeavor. Well, this over-endeavor is a subtle point. I mean, there's a saying that, uh, that you should act as if everything depended on your effort, and you should pray as if everything depended on God. So, yeah, everything is a combination of that, like the example of uh, Mother Yashoda binding Lord Krishna. There was a combination of Parishram, her endeavor, hard labor, and Krishna Kripa, Krishna's mercy. By that combination, uh, the, the two inches or two fingers length by which the, 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 the ropes were too short was overcome. So we need uh, to do both. 
and if you um, yeah the main thing is not to forget Krishna <clears throat> and um, yeah we always have to be thinking you know does Krishna want this because we might endeavor for something and then it doesn't happen and then it may be very well that Krishna didn't want it. So um, I guess it's like, uh, you know, one should not eat too much or eat too little, sleep too much or sleep too little. So one shouldn't endeavor too much or too little. <laughs> and it's, it's it, it 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 reminds me uh, some of Srila Prabhupada's god brothers came to visit him and you know Srila Prabhupada had made some adjustments uh, you know cons to spread Krishna consciousness especially like he was mentioning how he engaged the, the boys and girls together in preaching and how that had had great results. And that his god brothers, for all their strictness, they couldn't really spread Krishna consciousness. I mean, he's just making that point. So after, after the, these particular god brothers, who were favorable to Srila Prabhupada, met with him and left, Shrutakirti Prabhu, uh, who was Srila Prabhupada's servant, said, you know, Srila Prabhupada, we have, we have faith in you. We know that, that you kept the basic principles and you only adjusted the details. But how do we know what is a basic principle and what is a detail? And Srila Prabhupada closed his eyes and paused for a moment and he said, that requires a little intelligence. <laughs> so a lot of our questions can, can be solved with a little intelligence. Um, yeah. All right, well, thank you. Oh. Is it fine? Just one quick question. Okay, one quick question. <laughs> So how do we bring up uh, kids in the Krishna Krishna consciousness with more interesting and uh, more appealing for them? Because most of the kids, because of the parents, they come and sit, which they're not interested for. They just want to play and then just want to be with their friends. But how do we make them more appealing for Krishna consciousness? Make them interesting. Now that's a very good question. A very important question. Well, um, it's good to have activities for the children. Um, when, you know, when the adults are sitting in satsang, like we are, it's good to have some activities for them. Uh, and those activities can be fun. Um, in Juhu, Srila Prabhupada instructed us to make a school for the children and he gave ways to make it fun, you know, that they should, they should uh, put on plays about Krishna and you know somebody plays a cow and somebody plays Krishna um, yeah it, 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 it will require some adult or more than one to maybe sacrifice sitting in the satsang to keep them occupied and another point is, um, you know, they should have good experiences and good memories. If they, yeah, we, we don't want them to feel that Krishna consciousness is getting in the way of their fun. Um, and of course, it's very important that they have devotee friends of the same age, that's really important. Um, do any parents here have any tips? Yes. 
Um, <clears throat> I've raised particularly three of my children, as well as all of the things that went on during the time when they were growing up, they're older now, but because of the fact that I always kept Krishna at the center, and I explained to them that they're going to deal with the dualities of material life, and it's not easy, <coughs> simple, but if they just remember Krishna, regardless, sooner or later, they'll be okay. And now all of them are favorable. They don't not like Krishna because if you push too far to the right or too far to the left, I've seen the negativities jump up in some children, unfortunately, and they just go away. Because they've seen, oh, what the heck, I don't get anything out of this, and blah, 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 and I've seen so much nonsense. But if they just have enough to be able to understand the primary responsibility in life is to become Krishna conscious, and at the end, all right, I'll give you an example. I told my one son, Mark and Day, I said, you were born to be able to read Srimad Bhagavatam to me at the time of death. It's your only job. And he kept that. <laughs> so therefore, I don't have to worry whether they like Krishna or don't like Krishna. They'll always have him in yeah. their heart. And then, now, uh, my daughter, she has two children. And those children, by nature, because they've come out of her as being a devotee, they're very wonderful devotee children. And because of previous life, this lifetime, they have a chance to finish up. Nice. Well, this did remind me, we had some um, parents and children uh, visit m my ashram in California, and the children were devotees. And we asked the children, and we also asked the parents, like, what was the, what was the magic charm that, that worked so well? So one couple uh, live in Alachua, Shesha Prabhu and his wife, Madhumati. And their two daughter, daughters are both devotees. I think they're initiated. I know at least one is initiated. Both are initiated. And what Shesha Prabhu and his wife said was that they never told their daughters to do anything. But they themselves did everything. They would host devotees, they would serve devotees, they would go to the temple for Mangal Arti in the morning program. They did everything, but they never told their daughters to do anything. But they ju just by seeing their parents, they, they wanted to do it. And then we asked um, a, 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 a young couple, who's both, both the wife's parents and the son's, the husband's parents were devotees. And they both said similar things, that uh, they, they really appreciated that their parents didn't force them. But at the same time, their parents were very strong and exemplary devotees. So, and then I've heard it said, but, it's a little awkward because they're children here. I have to think about this. <laughs> well, I'll say it because I've heard it said that if if a child has a desire to experience something that's not strictly Krishna conscious, such as going to a concert or, or something. Rather than deny them, it's better to go with them. Because, you know, if you, if, 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 if you, if you don't go with them and you, you deny them, in the end they may do it anyway mm -hmm. without you. But with a, a sort of um, you know, furtive mentality, like secretive mentality, which is not good for your relationship. And if you go with them, you know, you can, um, like, add your own 
Krishna conscious perspective to what you all just experienced together. Um, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, I mean, I discussed some of these points with the school in um, Dallas, a very good school. And they started introducing field trips and things, you know, that are fun, that, that can be educational. So they're, they don't feel like they're too cloistered or too restricted or too limited. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You have to look at how some of those experiences, yeah. they're going to experiment anyway. Yeah. Okay. Just like we did. You know, we yeah. Okay, all glories to the future generation <laughs> and the parents who are raising them. All right, so next. Standing Kirtan. Standing Kirtan. Okay, thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Sri Harinam Prabhu Ki Jai.